I want to show you how you can run a macro automatically when a document opens or closes using the auto open and auto close. Now here I've got a booking form and I want it to prompt me to put in the course attendee date location and go to notes as well. So what I'm going to do is show you the auto open. We're then going to go and edit the VBA, the macro, which is the code behind it so that it prompts us. And then we're going to do an auto close with just a message box that comes up here as well. Now, the first thing we need to do is save this as a macro enabled document. So if I go into file here and go into save as, you'll see down the bottom in the file format, it's something you probably use a lot, which is the docx. Now you can't save macros in a docx. I'm going to click here in the file format and go down to word enabled document, which is a docm. You can see there's a template as well, the dot M as well if you want to create a template for it. I'm going to click on that and you'll see at the top here it's got booking form doc M. So let's just call this booking form um, my courses and click on save. So that's now done that. I can now save macros into here. So we're going to create a quick macro just by using a record macro. If you're not familiar with macros, keep a lookout for my tutorials coming up in Word on these. I've already done quite a few in Excel. So you can check those all out on my channel. So the first thing you want to do is go over here to your developer tab. If you haven't got your developer tab, over here you've got these three dots. And by the way, this all works pretty much the same way in Windows. I'm doing this on a Mac, so it really doesn't matter. Over here, if I click on this and choose more commands, you'll see I've got the ribbon option. It starts off on the quick access toolbar here. And if I scroll down here, you'll see it's got the developer option that's ticked, which is exactly what I've done. If you haven't got it, you need to do it. Let's just hit cancel because as I said, I don't need to do it here and just close my word preferences. So you would find it under your word preferences, which on a Mac comes under word and then settings, and again, there's the ribbon and toolbar if you wanted to do the same thing. So before I start recording my macro, I need to tell it where it's gonna put things, and I've already put three bookmarks in here for the course attendee and date. I'm just gonna do one for location and notes. The macro remembers everything, arrow keys that you press, you know, the enter key to move things down. So let's just click here where it's got location. Let's go into inserts, let's go to bookmark, Let's put in location, click on add, and click down here for notes. And let's just put another bookmark in here for notes. And as I said, it remembers everything. So if you go to a bookmark, you use the arrow keys or whatever, it's going to remember all of that and pressing the enter. So anything you press or do gets remembered here. Okay, let's just go back to here. I'm now ready to start recording my macro. Let's go to developer. Let's go to record macro. And you can also start a macro by clicking down at the bottom here on this little scroll icon here. So let's just click on that just down here in the status bar. And the key thing to remember is to type in auto open. And that's what it is. It's all in the name. So auto close would run if you when you close it. So there's auto open. Now this is gonna be saving it into the normal document, like the main template. I don't want it to do that. I'm going to change it to only open over here from my booking form. So let's just do that. I could create a keyboard shortcut. We don't need a keyboard shortcut for this because it's gonna run automatically. So if you wanna know more about that, just keep a lookout for more of my tutorials on macros. So let's click on OK. Now, what you can see with the mouse is it's got a little icon next to it showing a little scroll to tell me it's recording. I can see in my developer tab, it's got pause recording. If I just wanted to pause it for a moment, I've also got stop recording when I'm done. And down in the bottom in the status bar, it's also showing stop there. So there's two places to stop it. OK, let's go back into insert. And I'm going to go to each of those bookmarks. I'm going to type something in there. And then we're going to go in and create some input boxes so that we can actually have a prompt. So let's go to bookmark. 
First thing I want to do is go to course. Let's click on go to, let's close. And the reason I'm typing these in is so that I've got a placeholder for where I'm going to put things in in a moment. So let's just go to attendee, that's Gary. The dates, oh, I don't want to actually go forward like that. Let's go back to here. I was just clicking around, I don't want to do that. Um, and there's the date, let's just do go to and let's put in 27th March 2023. Again, I clicked, let's go to bookmark again. Let's go to location. And just one last one, we're going to just do the bookmark, going to the notes, close. I'm just going to press the keyboard a couple of times so you can just see what happens when I do that. Okay, so that's my macro. I could then do things like save it and so on, but we're, we're not going to do that. Really, the key thing here is this auto open. So I'm going to stop it. I'm just going to go and clear all of these and I just don't want to do too much because don't press the keyboard too much because it will get rid of the bookmark as well. Okay, so I've cleared all of those. Let's just save this. I'm going to close it. Okay, let's open it and see what happens. Okay, you need to click enable macros. It's got disabled macros because it's basically a security thing. You don't want to get harmful documents that might contain viruses or anything like that. If you're not expecting it to run a macro, hit disable macros. If you weren't expecting this document in the first place, hit do not open. We're going to enable macros. And it opens and it has typed in all of those. Don't forget, I deleted those. Okay, so I'm just going to close this. We're going to create the auto close one as well. So I am going into here, we're going into file, open recent, booking form. I'm going to hit disable macros on this time because I can still edit them. So I've done that. I didn't want anything to run. Let's go to developer. So what we can do is we can go into macros and there's auto open. We're going to come back to this again in a moment. If I click edit, it takes me into the editor, which is the visual basic for applications. Now, you can see it's got my code here and we'll come back to this in a moment. Down at the bottom here, under n sub, let's just put a couple of spaces in. Let's just type in sub. All of these start with sub. And I am going to type auto close. Open and close brackets. It automatically puts that in. And a message box that is just going to say saved. Please send to administrator. Let's get that correct. OK, so when we save this and then close it. So if I close it now, it won't do anything because I disabled the macros. So let's hit save. This button here goes back to the Word document. I'm actually going to close that. There it is. Let's just save, make sure. Let's close. OK, let's open it. Enable the macros this time. There we go. Now, I'm going to come back to this. We do need to save this as something else because it's going to keep doing this. I'm just going to clear these and we're going to see what happens when I auto close it. The only reason I'm deleting these carefully is not to delete the bookmarks that are there. OK, done. Let's hit save. Now, if I hit close, there you go. And you can get it to run a whole load of things before it closes if you wanted it, perhaps save it somewhere else. So let's click on OK. And that's closed. Now, I'm just going to open it. Um, I don't want it to run, so I'm going to choose my disable macros. Now, you probably know how to make changes, but I'm going to actually show you now how to put an input box in here so it actually prompts us over here. So let's go to developer. Let's go to macros. Aha, now you can see both of my macros are there. Let's go to auto open. Let's go to edit. 
and what I want it to do is to actually prompt me to put in the course and so on. So I've got to do something called dimensioning them, which tells it that it is a some text, which is a string of text. So let's call this my course. And that's, oh, don't want any spaces in there. Course as string. Let's do the same for my ten. D as string. So these are basically telling it that whatever is going into the input box, that it's a bit of text. It could be a number, it could be something called Boolean, which is basically a yes or no. So let's just do my dates. And you can see I'm kind of typing it with some capital letters just to make it easier to identify. And it becomes handy in a moment, you'll see, when I'm actually putting it in the code as well. So there we go. That's what I've done there. Now, it's going here, this code here, you'll see what it's doing. Selection is going to, and it's going to the course bookmark. It's telling me that it's a bookmark. And then when it gets there, you can see this is what I did is I typed in words. So what we now need it to do is actually put these in. So let's just do my course equals input box. This is the thing that you use and whoops, input box. And what you want it to do is prompt within there, like enter course. Now you can have a title at the top as well. You don't have to fill it in. That is just say course. That's going to be at the top of the input box. Oh, that's just a mistype there. That's input box. Now, interestingly, I've put my course in. You can see I've done it all in lowercase. When I go to the next line, I've typed it correctly because it's capitalized the C, the same as what it is dimensioned at the top there. OK, so I can now do the rest and it's going to prompt each one and then it's going to go and fill them in. So let's just do that. OK, so I've done all of those here. And now what I'm going to do is change this over here. So where it's got, where it says word, let's change that to my course. Again, going to do it all in lowercase. When I move to the next line, it capitalizes it. I know it's correct. This one here, let's do the same. Same again. It's always a good little check, isn't it? And this works on functions uh, as well. One more. There we go. Right, so let's just save that. I'm going to close this. Let's just save. I'm now going to close my booking form. Let's open it. Enable the macros. Enter course. Word advanced. Let's enter my name. The date. Let's make it 29th March 2023. And the location on site. Boom. And it's filled all that in for you. So that's how you can use the auto open. If I was now to close it, you've seen that it's going to come up with a message box there as well. So just remember the two things are auto open and auto close. That's all you need to make a macro run automatically when you open and close. Thanks for watching. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe and come back for more.